today I'm kind of under pressure because, hold up, let me see, put the lighting down a little bit. I'm a little stressed out. I cannot find my other battery, which is really, really, really annoying. But listen, I'm working with one bar of battery today, and I'm very upset about it, to say the least. Like, I really don't, like, if people steal it from me, I really don't know what's going on. But I just spent too much time looking for a battery. So I don't know if today's episode is going to be a short one. But the good news is that we do have we do have two things. So one, my mouse is finally connected to this guy right here, which is very fun. Still having mic problems, which is mad annoying. Um, I have this little fan here because I'm just hot today. I don't know if it's from what's going on that I can't grab my charger or what. Um, we also got the keyboard connected. We got our refresher today. We got a lemon water. And yeah, I'm just going to type in the rules of the show and not say too much. I want to just get all the footage on to be about reading stories and stuff. I can't tell y'all how many we're gonna make today and I have a very strict schedule where I can't really just play around like that. So we're gonna just get right into it. Um, today's episode two of my series, which is very exciting. Um, I feel like episode two is even more exciting than episode one. That's just me. But anyways, I want to get really, really, really straight into it. I've never filmed with one percentage, like one bar of battery. So <clears throat> sorry, I'm really sorry about. Like, I wish I was more prepared for this. Um, so we're gonna go to our saves, and let's just see. You know, I got my mic here. Put my mic here. Welcome to episode two of Zanji Does Tea. And as I, as you guys know, the ghosts always have a drink with us. Um, I don't know if we could drink L on YouTube like that. So, oh, so I can't tell. Is my hand lighter than my face? I promise y'all, this is the correct foundation color. My face is just like the darkest on my body, and then the rest of my body is very pale. It's pretty sad. But I saved a bunch, and we're just going to get started with, I don't know, let's see. I don't know how we should go heavy today or what, you know, I kind of feel like the expectation is high because it's episode two, so you kind of want to come out with a banger, at least for the first, like, five or four or three episodes. But, um, let's start with, let's start with this, okay? I, 23 female, want to tell my best friend, 23 male, that I have feelings for him. I am not sure how... Here's the tea. This is just how I operate. When I used to have, when I was single, I really had crushes like all the time on people. And that's just the truth. I don't know. I, you know, I'm really big on astrology. So if we're talking about that aspect, I have Libra in my chart. And Libras just be acting all over the place. They love love, all of that. I love love. Libra and Venus here. And I'm upset. I'm obsessed. So I would have crushes and sometimes it would be stupid crushes and sometimes it'd be like, okay, you actually like this person. I'm always like, if you're cool with the person, just tell them how you feel rather than being like, you know, just dragging it out for yourself. And like I would always drag it out for myself. And once I started growing up and realizing that when I want to get something off my chest, I'm gonna get it off my chest. Um and all I'm gonna say is sometimes it works sometimes it works sometimes it's horrible and sometimes you lose a friend and that's just the truth um but let's get started this person says I have liked more I have liked more so loved my best friend since exactly three years now I've come to a point where not knowing weights weighs on me quite heavily and affects other parts of my life so I decided to tell him, ooh, and I, ooh, so she told him. I don't know what's about to happen, but I think I want to do it over texting, right? 
Okay, so she hasn't said it. She's deciding to tell him. So this is how she wants to do it. I have recently developed feelings for you as more than friends. Feel free to call to talk, but wanted to text you first to give you more time to react. Either way, I value as a friend and hope with, and hope will change that. My thoughts on the sex. I'm I'm unsure. I don't know because I'm gonna tell y'all this real quick. I bombed it one time when I did this before. Like I sent a whole like I'm talking like you know what iMessage is a thing where you send a message so long that it's like it does a little line so like you keep reading like yeah. My advice is don't do too much. Don't be saying how long you've liked this person. Like don't do all that in the beginning. Like just just go and be like yes you know. I got feelings for you. Not not even like text bombing like that. Like first be like, just talk. Just hit him up like it's a regular day and then be like, I kinda wanna talk to you about something serious, honestly. And then I don't it depends on the relationship too. Like I don't know if you want to FaceTime about that or text about that. Because I feel like the FaceTime can go well if like that person's feeling you back. If they're not it can be awkward and I think it's very important to know and to make that clear that like telling your friend if you don't like me back bro it's cool it's fine I will move on I'm just putting on my feelings here so you know how I feel you don't feel the same way okay that's cool I'm gonna wrap it up take my shit to go my to go box and move on and we don't gotta talk about that ever again I'm sorry for making you uncomfortable and that's just how I felt and I will put my eggs in another basket. Like, simple. And I really think that friendships can come back from this. Um, but I am here to tell you that I'm living proof that sometimes it doesn't work like that. Um, and I've even received texts where people are like, bro, I see more than, like, a friend. And I'm like, more often than not, I was like, it's not, it's not going to be the one for me. And, I mean, I would feel a way, like, not a way, but, like, I'd be like... Like, wow, my probably like, like, I'm kind of like kiki and stuff. I like, that's hilarious. Like, why do you like me like that? But it's fine. And, like, you guys can make a joke out of it and hope that your friend moves on and doesn't have secret intentions of trying to get with you for the rest of the friendship. But we live in different states, and our most common way of communicating is through call where we talk for hours. However, I don't want to catch him off guard. It's a text that was approached instead of call, and so um, it's a text the best way to come with his friend. So we kind of answered that already. Um, and the fact that you guys call each other, I would do a phone call. And I mean, like, it's kind of better, their FaceTime, because you don't have to see their face while you're saying it. Like, you just be like, to be honest, blah, 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 you know? But that is my advice for that one. Take it easy, and make sure you make your friend comfortable, like, because that's the thing, is when you do stuff like that, you got to make sure that people, you're making it clear that, like, you're not forcing them to be with you and that you still want the friendship if it if you're not interested so girlfriend admitted to cheating on me by sending nudes what more is there to say why did she do that like why would you do that anyway it says hello i need some help on this one me and my girlfriend, we were arguing a bit for the past week, and she wanted... Guys, don't... I'm sorry about the background noise. This is a lot of people now today. Me and my girlfriend were arguing a bit for the past week, and she wanted a one-day break to focus on ourselves and reflect. But more often than not, when I'm like, I want a break, I just want a little time. Like, I'm being dramatic. Like, let's be honest. Um, I think me and my partner mutually agree that breaks are like very big very big territory for like mishaps miscommunication blah 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 and that's different for every relationship you know but personally like as a union like as a relationship and individually we both agree that breaks are kind of messy but we just don't we just give each other space if we need that but also it's like one day break like i don't know i'd be like i need a week break but that's just me being dramatic but i'm like i'd be like why do you need a break like talk to me you know um, so, also she said to focus on ourselves and reflect, like, do y'all live together? Is it like, she feels like y'all always with each other? Like, she needs to speak up with how I'm feeling about that break, one day break, too. It's like, and I, if I was a guy, I'd be kind of sus, like, what, you need one day to what, be nasty? Like, what are you, what are, what are the intentions here? We took that one day break and talked about our days at night. That's so sad. Imagine seeing your boy every day and like, well, I don't know if y'all saw each other every day, but 
we only talked that night like a little bit um that night she has random that night she had random streaks with guys on snap she admitted to it today after we hung out all day and sent it over text so did you check her phone to know that i'm assuming you did random streaks with guys so it's more than one guy as well also a streak is more than one day so this has been going on for days, but like this isn't just one day thing. Okay. She admitted to it today after we hung out all day and sent it over text. So they hung out all day and she didn't say a word. And then that night she decided to text him that. That night with the way this is spelled is so bad. That night with she texted one of the random guys and she said they traded nudes and she sent titty pics to him and was fooling around. She admitted to it, and now she is saying I'm wrong of her. She shouldn't have started to push me away. My thing is, like, girl, it's very hard to side with you when you're doing stuff like this. Like, even when I'm mad at my man, I'm not like, I'm going to send someone else titty pics because I'm mad. I just, it's giving me very, like, she's very over the relationship. She's very detached. She, clearly there's a friction in some place i'm assuming the sexual part of the relationship there's a little miscommunication probably going on because she's clearly looking for validation attention praise from someone else like and that's the gag like that's what sending news i feel like is all about is like you want someone to be like damn bro you look good like oh shit okay i see you i see you like i really don't know any other way to put it you know and when you're sending it to someone that's not your man obviously hot ass mess don't do that like that's how you get left she had to send it to her man i really don't you know it's kind of like if there was things that were not spicing things up you send it to your man i really don't i'm not siding with this and sis she admitted to it and now she's saying she's saying that she has never been committed to someone and it scared her okay well the gag is like you gotta have that conversation and i know that fear of commitment is a thing so i'm not gonna sit here and be like girl you're capping I'm like no that's not true that's the thing, I know, but that's something you gotta talk to your partner about. So they can reassure you, like, bro, it's fine, like, I know you're scared, but don't be scared, like, whenever you're scared, just come to me and tell me how I can help you. Because dealing with it is, this is not the way to deal with that. If you have commitment issues, this is not the way to deal with it. You're just making more issues for yourself, the other person who's doing the photos, and for your man. To be honest, she said she couldn't go lying on me and she showed me she unadded every guy and blocked them and saying she noticed today more than ever how much I love and care about her. She says she needs this chance. I don't know. She's saying there will never be any more chances and it will never happen again. Opinions, what should I do? I'm very, I'm very strict about shit like this. Like, if you do this, like, I feel like you're long gone. Like, it's nothing I can do to save you, to save us. Like, to be honest, you made your decision and you're you're going to agree with it like i don't know like i would never trust her again like and i have trust issues so that's just me projecting i would never trust her again and i don't care if you show me that you um unadded every guy and block them they still got your news in their phone whether you like it or not or believe that they have it or not like yeah okay someone could be a gentleman and not save your photos but they saw it they probably have it saved what do i look like as a man as the boyfriend what do i look like like knowing that my girl nudes is in someone's phone while we were in a relationship like i can't even be like happy for your anniversary and know that this guy received my girl's nudes two months ago like that's embarrassing for me it really crosses a line for me boundaries are crossed i i know it sounds dramatic but i would not i'm gonna shake the table up today with this one especially with my camera almost about to die oh should i do it no i'm not gonna do that one yet i'm gonna do that again the next time oh you know what I'm going to do? I'm obviously going to take a break and then come back and we will do that towards the end. A few moments later. We're going to get this fan out of the way. So, I feel like we should do maybe three more. I did get some long ones today as well. And don't forget to submit your story to our email. Put it or it's already on the screen. I put less lemon in my water this time because honestly, I don't know if y'all noticed, I put a big chunk. Let me see. Let's do a very heavy one. Um, The title of this one is, I never thought I would live this long and now I don't know what to do. 
So the gag is, honestly, I feel you on that. Um, and not on like, no like, I'm trying to end my life type shit, but like, more so like, oh, I didn't plan after this. Like, I didn't really know what happens after this. And I don't know if it's because the lack of mentorship or not having like an older sister or whatever like i really don't know where that stems from ever since i was younger i always saw life like once uh, once you pass 20 21 and you're old which i'm 23 now and i'm like okay i'm kind of old but like no i'm not old like shut up so i don't know i'm kind of still open to that idea of like what now um my best advice before I even read this is like always keep yourself busy and you won't notice how quick time is going, okay? As long as you're doing stuff you like, that you love, I think you could be fine and won't get scared of it. Um, let's just read it, okay? I'm a 19 year old male. I have severe social anxiety and can't even leave my house without having someone with me. My entire high school years, I thought something would magically happen and I would never have to face the horrors of reality i never thought i would live this long but here we are and now i'm so stuck so it seems like you really didn't see life after high school and that really wasn't the case for me personally so for this one it's kind of tough you're saying you have some social anxiety and you can't leave your house without someone with you i'm gonna keep reading because i really i need more insight honestly to give you better advice don't have any passion i don't have any interest i'm not good at anything and can't talk to people that's not true you have interests people are good at something even if it's like not you have an interest like i really i'm a personal believer that you can't exist on this world with no interest that's just it makes no sense to me i flunked my first semester of college because i got too anxious to do online school i got academic probation and couldn't afford to pay the tuition for a second semester and now i'm lying to my parents that I'm taking classes when I'm not, so let's stop the breaks there. Therapy. Therapy. Friends. Are we talking to anyone? You know, I'm, I'm just staring at the screen because it's like, this person just seems so lost, and now I feel, I feel their energy through the screen. And it's really, like, it, it sucks that you felt so anxious to do online school. And it's like, why is it so hard to tell your parents, you know, it's like, I wish you had somebody to talk to, like, not even your parents, like, that's sad, like, it sucks. I keep praying I'll get hit by a or something horrible because I can't bear the thought that I'm completely useless and won't make it in the world. Yeah, you're giving me very, like, it's, you're, you're, you feel like your time is done. And that's really, really sad to read. I didn't know it was going to get this dark. Um, I told my parents about my anxiety. They don't believe me. We don't have the money to afford therapy anyway, and I don't make enough out of my job to afford it either. Mm -hmm. I'm just the F up. I can't see myself working any type of job with the job I get. I know I won't make enough to support myself anyway. On top of that, I don't have friends or anyone I can bunk with if I get an apartment. It doesn't it just doesn't feel real. I have nothing going for me, and I never will, and now I can't see a way out. I don't want to die, but I can't help but feel like that's the best option. So, here's the gag, and I'm trying to like analyze with an open mind. You clearly like writing, you're on it. You know how to form sentences, you know how to speak, you know, you know how to make your thought come across. You know right from wrong. I feel like this person is very much so like just sulking in the negative parts of their life and not looking at any positives and I'm very sad that they don't have a positive figure to remind them of that. Making online friends is really easy, I feel like in my opinion. Um, one meme away from like making a friend online, like that's how I see it when it comes to social media and stuff. The fact that you got anxious to do online school, like, that's really, like, it really sucks. Like, I really, really want you to give it another go. And we had on-campus therapy. I wasn't a fan, like, I mean, he was a male therapist. I just never had a male therapist. I think it was weird for me, personally. Um, but I mean, therapy is therapy. I go to therapists still, um, not that one, but 
on campus they did offer it for free like with the tuition so why don't you check out school again you know see if they have that as an option that way you can kind of get into that therapy realm for free plus for free plus you're back in school and completing your education and i mean if that's something you want to really pursue because if you were in college what were you what was your major what were you studying were there any clubs that stood out to you you know um <clears throat> let's see what people said to him i've been in a similar situation at a period of time where i was shadowed by other successes uh-huh um my advice is take it easy take your time go for a job yeah just do simple stuff take a bubble bath make your favorite food if you like to cook look at other recipes you know it's like let's see someone said please don't think like that um think you like this is bad for your mental health yeah and it's okay that you know eventually you'd hope that you could do it by yourself like leave the house by yourself but if you really are dealing with that anxiety because it seems like you are it seems all right you know maybe look into getting a therapy dog if you're able service animal i think that would really help you like having a pet too is really really great for stuff like this because you could just bond and honestly compared to dogs and cats i feel like cats are just after being living with the cat for two years now like i feel like cats are very much more like my speed even though i love dogs they're just hilarious but cats kind of like feel you you know so somebody's a clinical psychologist and they commented i live in ecuador and i studied blah blah, blah. um people with social anxiety suffer and they don't come to the beginning of therapy therapy works but you have to keep going it seems like a lot of therapists have been commenting, like, relax. You say, they're saying, find works that pays enough to live. If you're struggling to support yourself, you know, don't invest any any effort without seeking a relationship. Learn to control your emotional responses to the situation. I would say journal. Like, you clearly are open to talking about your feelings, which is a great start. And especially anonymously online, that's really good. This is a very hard place to be in. I've been in this place before, but I don't usually stay that long because I am just a rabbit like when it comes to interests and hobbies I like everything I want to try everything so I keep myself busy if you know what I mean not in the sense of like I'm avoiding my issues but I just keep myself busy because I like to do a lot of stuff so like yeah if anyone is going through stuff like that don't feel afraid to message me or comment you know below or if you want to get in contact you can let me know um perfect time to submit to the series as well but yeah that was really a downer like i really hope that this person does not feel this way anymore they have then since then have received 1.3 k comment so i'm sure that's more than enough advice um i really have like not that much to say because also they didn't really say that much about themselves um uh, as a person um but yeah and also remember like life goes on like you what i realized the other day i had like an epiphany where it's like life continues to go like you just have to keep up like you have to just remember like every day is a new stage of life and more things are going to keep happening you just have to keep up like you know once you start turning close to your 30s you know thinking about buying a house or what is your whole your home goal what is your family goals like planning for those kids like you know do you have any fitness goals like what will your body look like three months from now two years from now like preparing early like things like that kind of make me excited for the future though i have just a fear of death which is really annoying let's do another one let's do like a little upbeat one well speaking of future let's read this one okay my mom is constantly nagging me to have children and marry my boyfriend how do i shut her up so the gag is you just look at her and like can you not no, i'm just kidding um i know some people deal with this i mean <clears throat> not right now in my in my life like how things are right now this won't be a concern but so they say I am a 25 year old female and am with my significant other since six years with no intention to marry him in the near future, let alone have babies. 
But why is that? Like, I'm kind of trying not to laugh. But, like, why is that, like, with no intention to marry him in the near future? Like, do you plan to marry him at all? I mean, you can be those people that are just like, I believe in marriage. Like, it's weird. It's just all people work. I get that. But I feel like it's kind of harsh when it's not about that. You know what I'm talking about? Like, when people are like, no, it's not about it. I just don't want to do it. Like, I don't want to be rude to him. I don't want to be tied down. Like, that be giving me a red flag. Personally, the having babies part, normal. I think people are entitled to that decision. Um, at the moment, we're students in a wedding or kids are in our time or money budget anytime soon. Okay. Um, somehow, my mother thinks it's time for us to marry. Always making vague comments like, we would always help out financially at your wedding just so that you know. Or, wow, look at that wedding dress, it's gorgeous, but you would look better in the v-neck. I already told her several times that I do not intend to marry him anytime soon. Stupidly thought that it would make the situation better. Since then, the wedding comments didn't stop, but the child comments were added. Um, please. Wow, you treat your cats like babies. Better get a real one. I don't like that. The way she said that, like, it was better get a real one. Like, and if I don't? It looks so natural. You're holding your cousin's babies. You would be a great mom. And also, wait till you have your own children, then you will understand. It's like, here's the thing, too, is, like, as women, I really didn't notice this till I grew up. Like, no one tells you it's okay to not have kids. No one does. Like, it's always, oh, what are the baby names? Oh, when you grow up, how many kids do you want? Blah, blah, blah. Like, no one tells you. So they did not have kids. Like, I used to think for the longest, like, oh, it's weird if you don't have kids. Like, that's what your body's meant to do. No, your body's not meant to have kids. Like, the most toxic thing I was telling myself ever. But that's because no one was telling me, girl, you had the option. And it's nice that they're trying to drop hints that they would pay for the wedding. So that's something you should take into account. Like, you know, that they would help you. Because you're saying that, um money budget is kind of an issue too if they're willing to help then you know but i know sometimes help is not enough when like you really can't afford anything like yeah i'll take your help but i don't even have money to pay for anything period so it's like your help is gonna stay there you know so i get that child comments i just feel like they're very inappropriate like you treat your cats like babies better get a real one like absolutely not but like but i don't like what if you're like i don't want kids like you know or you know my, i'm also curious like how old it seems like your family or your mom might be projecting as well because she probably had you younger or around your age and the whole wedding thing too and maybe she's just projecting as like come on like you know like i already had this all this time why aren't you but she shouldn't be like that like she needs to give you that space but i'm happy that she's open about it and talking to you about it like that's good she writes <clears throat> well i told her since i'm 14 that i do not want children I think she meant I told her since I was 14 that I did not want children. It's not that I hate kids. I just love my life without them. <laughs> Thinking that that what I don't have, I cannot miss. Seeing some friends with children, I see the fatigue in their eyes and I get really frustrated at the noise level acting they're being at their homes. And that's the guy too is like, I once I got older too, I realized, I mean, I helped raise my siblings, but it's different. It's different, and I'm, you're kind of giving me only child vibes, to be honest, but, yeah, when you help raise your siblings or you're around your siblings, you kind of get numb to that, the, the, the noise. <clears throat> However, I have moments where I'm around babies, and if it's too loud, I zone out, and I get that completely. Like, there's times I'm like, I don't want to do this. Like, this is frustrating. But... There's other times when things go right and not that I don't have to hear the crying and yelling. I feel like, oh my god, I would love a baby, like a little thing that looks like me, you know, um, me and my partner. So I get it. And like, and this is not me forcing you or anyone watching to think you're like, I am pro only, you can only have a baby mess. I talked to my mom about how her comments make me angry and I feel belittled. And I applaud her for that. Like, she should be able to vet and be like, can you stop with that? Like, um, and her mom brushed it off and said, you just don't understand. I was once like you and now like me. My children are the single best thing happened to me. You will be, ch you will change your mind, I promise. 
it's a no for me. Like, this makes me think about, I had asked my gynecologist, how do you know if you can have babies or not? You know, and she was like, um, the only way to know is if you just have one. Like, practice having one. And after six months, if you guys are not having a baby yet, then you you start testing all that and it's like you gotta think about it i'm not about to like actually make a baby just to see if i can have, get pregnant with this suit i'm not about to actually have a baby to see if i like it because what if she has a baby and doesn't like it and then that's emotional distress for her for the kid what's she gonna do put it up for adoption one at seven like the baby's gonna know everything and that's the guy like i really don't like that and my recommendation if she is open to exposure with kids nannying jobs babysitting daycare hanging more around her friends don't be so negatively around your friends with the noise level like you gotta understand their kids but if they're being bad they're being bad I mean, you just gotta say friend can you shut them up but um yeah ma that combo is not it sorry so the last part he says the thing is i already feel that i do not want to visit or talk to her because it's her Go to subject number one. Me explaining the situation to her doesn't help. I love and miss my mother, but her constant teasing drives us farther apart <clears throat> than ever. It's looking like your mom is not gonna, not gonna budge. And it's very frustrating. And you already talked to her, so it's annoying. You know, like, do you have a relationship with your father at all? Like, I would ask if he can, like, help and be like, bro, she said no. Like, just let it, just let it be it you know you having a baby does affect the whole family so your mom might be missing something she might be wanting something maybe she needs a pet or something you know maybe she's lonely and she feels like oh my baby will have a baby soon and it'll be fine or she never really envisioned her life like you did you never wanted kids maybe she always envisioned her life with you having a kid and that's a mistake that i feel like mothers make often where they just assume the future of the child and obviously that doesn't help any um let's see what people are saying so someone says our parents always try to pressure my wife and i to have kids since we were since, to have kids since we were married in our early 20s i firmly said no in caps one we are financially ready and don't want financial help to raise a kid i want one in the future i want to spend time with my wife traveling and having fun till our 30s gag same and until then, we'll see if we're ready to have kids. Yep. I like to sleep. Have it. Girl, when I found out some kids be waking up at 6 a.m. for what? Like, for what? I used to wake up at 11 every day. And then I got in a relationship, but he'd be waking me up at 8 a.m. And I'd be like, for what? But I really like waking up at 8 a.m. now because I'm like, I can get more things done in the day. I want to achieve all my goals I've set during my adulthood. But my parents keep on nagging. And all I know is I won't stop nagging. Um... All you have to say is no, not yet or no. I'm sorry, but that would change my priorities that in life. Someone said having kids is overrated. I mean, yeah, that's the best you could. I mean, I did kind of just jump to the conclusion that she wasn't going to budge, but keep telling her no. And clearly your mother's having an issue with it. Like, just try to see what will help her feel better. Like, clearly it's not that she wants something. Like, obviously she wants comfort in a way. Babies are cute. I get it, you know. If you got a friend that has a kid, why don't you bring your mom around that friend? You know what I'm saying? Like, do something like that. But, come on. Like, and I hope you have siblings so that they can have kids at least. So that she can kind of just, like, move it on. If someone said, my mother is like this, I'm going to recommend two conversations. First, quote, mom, I'm never going to have kids. If I change my mind, I'll let you know. I need you to stop pressuring me and subsiding me. Period. That's very direct and to the point. She said it better than me. She said, or say, mom, stop now. Every time she brings it up. Second, um, you know what? Let me explain this to you. My generation wants children, but we can't stomach having them. You know why? Because capitalism, the baby boomer generation, have like this planet cycles. And we're looking at one of two futures. 50 years of extreme austerity. What even is that word? Austerity, where we try to do massive public works. Okay, she's kind of going in, and I'm not about to read all that. But, but yeah, that's my advice to you. Like, keep saying no. Keep it pushing, babes. Why someone say put super glue in her hair, y'all? This one is really not 
kind it's kind of long um my 24 female co-worker um and he's a 21 year old man keeps telling me gross sex stories and asking me for sexual advice while around customers and co-workers and i don't know how to handle it without affecting the work environment i told you i'm gonna buy a, a little thing why not a lie at the stories but like why around the customers and co-workers like for what you did this for what that's my tea because i'm all for like kikiing with co-workers and getting tea and getting advice and stuff and when it comes to sex though like you gotta i, I only did that with best friends like not not just like acquaintance co-workers because then you know my business and it's just weird but did this like did you give her permission to be asking for advice on that because if so, like, you kind of open the door. But if you didn't, she's, like, imposing. Like, she's doing too much. And I hope she's not, like, trying to, like, say, like, you know, you trying to, you trying to do this with me? Like, because no. My coworker has been telling me very detailed stories about his girlfriends. Wait. He said, my 24 female coworker. So why are you saying about his girlfriends? babes you're confusing me all right yes i said girlfriends no the four girls somehow don't know it ranges from his sex to how their bodies look and okay so the person submitting this is a 24 year old female and the co-worker is a guy okay ew annoying like can you shut it up he's annoying for that all right um it ranges from his sex to how their bodies look and everything in between he is very egotistical he thinks he's hot shit and a gift to anyone who gets to be with him babe you tried it i'm the type of person originally that aims to please everyone for the sake of a decent workplace environment and that is why he keeps talking to me period he keeps talking because you're letting him i've been in this situation where it's so annoying it's just like bro get the hit and shut up like i don't want to tell you to your face can you stop talking to me or talking to me about this like i know i know what this is I don't ever want to be the reason drama starts and I tend to try making the drama end with me instead of passing it on. Girl, that's too much. I feel you on the I don't want to be the reason drama starts, but what? I'm struggling because this guy has no filter even when he's around customers and that's gross. I work at a rather lenient retail store when it comes to rules. Management doesn't really enforce things like uniform having folds out the register and stuff like that. It's giving our benefitor. I'm just kidding. I, that just popped in my head. I'm trapped having to listen to him because I'm at a register helping my own customer. He just starts talking like no one is even there. And no, don't do that. I would be like, we were trained not to do that. Like, I'm not going to talk to you. Sorry. Like, because what? Then you get in trouble and he doesn't because he don't know how to shut his mouth. Like, no. He makes humping motions or mentions something vague enough over the radio about previous conversation that none of our co-workers would like he sexualized customers and asked me to get the numbers of the girls who come in and i say no and he pushes it in a way that i feel like he genuinely believes i should do it for him oh and he has started to try and figure out which type of guy i'm into asking which co-workers i have sex with and then going to do somewhere i like all that work it ain't even done and i can already tell he's just trying to hit it he just he thinks he's looking good right now and thinks like you're liking his vibe and y'all are vibing and he's like you gotta be next so like what's the, what's the word like who really asks their coworker who you would have sex with if you were trying to know if you're on that list like he's trying to bag like he's trying to hit it and i'm really sorry that he feels that you're giving off that vibe that you would do that i don't know why he's if he just has no boundaries he doesn't pee but it will feel trapped i laugh it off because i don't want to flat out tell him i'm sick of him thinking and that's what you're doing you're laughing no you can't laugh you gotta be like that's not funny you should be like ew like you just like not even just don't laugh i'll be like ew like i'm good <laughs> i'm good nah 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 or you just gotta just get to that point where you just gotta lie and be like i have a boyfriend like sorry that's sick i hate being in those situations oh my god people don't get the hint like I feel trapped, I left it off, um, 
she doesn't want to make it awkward at work. That's why she's not being aggressive about it. I don't necessarily want to talk to a manager because they, they are all guys and I don't want them thinking I'm just complaining. And I also don't want them talking to the guy because I'm pretty sure my coworker would be easily, would be able to easily chase it back to me and thus making it. It should be as written up or anything. Let me end this by saying I'm not prude. I don't mind stories about sex, asking for advice or the like by my friends or people I consider close. I can joke about it all day with them, but I do not consider this guy a friend or an acquaintance. I dread working with him. Another note, I don't think he finds me attractive. I know his type, unfortunately, and I'm definitely not. I think he just, the, he's a flirty sexual type that has no boundaries. I don't know how to navigate this. It doesn't matter if you're not his type. He's probably trying something new, like... I don't believe in types. People can change their type all the time. That's number one. Number two, I was really sad when you said you don't want to talk to a manager because they're all guys. You think they're going to assume that you're complaining? Like, don't don't assume that. They're managers for a reason. They're supposed to help you. If they don't help you, then bye. I'm quitting. Like, And that's the gag. It's, like, it's worse if they hear about it and they're like, oh, well, you know like and then make it sexual with you too that's when it's like oh my god i need to go like this is horrible but you're just assuming that like and i don't know why you're assuming that um and you know the fact that you gotta prove yourself that you're like i'm not approved like girl and i don't think you are but like he's very annoying and i did have a co-worker like this one time and it was very uncomfortable and i ended up leaving the job not because of him but I would just really, like, avoid eye contact with, like, and when he talks to me, I'm like, I'm busy right now. Like, do you mind just, like, leaving me alone? I'm busy. And it'd be on some BS, like, oh, like, why are you acting like that? Like, what? And it's like, you know, and I was cool with the manager. Like, I always say this, when you start a job or go somewhere, get cool with higher ups to avoid things like this. Where you can feel comfortable doing stuff like this, too. Talking to people about it somebody says stop laughing at it dad would look him in the face and say this is stupid and inappropriate and i have no desire to continue period you don't want to talk to the manager so you need to hang out on your own to be honest yeah i'd be like can you chill like uh, you're not funny he's unprofessional this is the job of you co-worker manager and boss to educate and correct his behavior as an employee true a very unprofessional is everyone saying Honestly, and like I'm thinking too, why don't you just be like, don't you have friends to talk about? Like, do you take? I'd be like, you don't got guy friends to talk about. Like, I'm a girl, I don't want to hear about this. Like, do something like that. Also, it's like what's annoying me is like, imagine being that customer coming in and he's talking. Like, I hope you get like a age of a customer that's like, can you stop talking to her about this? Like, she's clearly uncomfortable, right? Because that would really save you a lot. But yeah, talk to the managers, girl. Why are you assuming that? Don't assume that. Your coworker's annoying. Try to avoid him. Try to make a homegirl in the job that could like vouch for you when he's trying it. Like, so she could be like, "Girl, we boy, we want to leave her alone. We busy or we talking." And then slowly but surely, he'll get the hit. Like, bye. Like, you're not gonna hit ever. You're never gonna get the chance. And period. Period. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Hey. the last story of today anybody else have really toxic parents that make you question what healthy love is supposed to look like the title says it all is what this person writes so here's my gag and here's my tea and like here's my loving water remember this right you're not your parents and that's a good thing right you're not your parents for some people it's a good thing you don't have to be like your parents. You have that freedom to do so. Everyone has a different love language. You don't have your parents love language. Like you don't necessarily have to have their love language. And that is something you'll find out on your own. In my experience. In my opinion. And you, your love language does not only originate from what you see in the house. But friendships. Companionships relationships with teachers with mentors you know what your love language you know it's like 
there's like seven i think you know praising gifts affection touching depends like you learn about this through the relationships you gain through life so remember that like healthy love is not only going to be shown in your parents remember that. so let's just read i'm stuck with parents that would probably benefit from getting a divorce tea mm -mm. but never seems to go through with it um because i'm constantly being around their dysfunctional love and then you realize that my perception of love is starting to get warped warped that word is so ugly have you ever thought that warped so on to the advice part portion because as she we're not done reading it but so far i'm glad that you can see it like you know some people don't see it and they're like what i just thought like this is how it goes does it not does it, it just doesn't go like that that's good that you're noticing it um, i've only ever been in one relationship and i think it's because i generally don't know how to act or feel when someone gives me constant healthy love and affection it feels like i don't deserve anything good because nothing good lasts in my household for that long i had to move back home after college to save money and i'm not in a good place financially to move out or else i would i don't think being around it would bother me this much as an adult as i did when i was a kid but i find myself becoming more emotionally scarred by it the older i get anyone else have any experience or advice for this let's read what some people say first I relate to this post so hard. My parents' ideas around love and family are dysfunctional, but they work with each other so they think the same way. And that's true. Group thinking, a real thing. When I go home for too long, I start to feel crazy for not wanting a relationship like they have. Where my family is super close, but overly involved and connected, my guy needed so much alone time. And that's true, I didn't know that too. Like. Not because of my parents, but I just didn't realize, like, not everyone is like you. I mean, obviously, I know that now, but I learned that years ago. Like, not everyone is like you, and people need a long time. Like, couples don't just be up on each other every time. Like, they be needing the space, babes. People are giving really good insight here, but I just wanted to read what people are saying first before I put my two cents. I mean, they're pretty hard to this as well. My parents didn't separate until so I almost graduated high school. They would fight and throw stuff constantly, etc giving details um the point is actually parents are not happy and why don't they divorce someone else said they kept together while we were home and then when we moved out they divorced so of course it's different right in every situation how it's like think about how are your parents as people like are they open to have that combo with you if I was a parent, I'd be kind of uncomfortable, but if they're open to having that talk with you, like, you should definitely just sit and be like, guys, like, it's annoying. It's truly annoying. Like, can y'all end it or what? You know, number one. Number two, therapy is what I would really advise for this. Therapy, 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 because you can go your whole life thinking something is normal when it's not. And no one's ever going to tell you because... You know, people just assume, yeah, it, it, who does that? And then you're going to be like, oh, but I do that. And they're like, but that's not normal. You know, so first things first, please try therapy and learning about your love language is, your boundaries. So many people relate in this and they're like, yeah, it's like, what? Um, and so many people are saying staying together for kids is horrible. Um, I can't remember last time I saw my parents touch each other. It's like stuff like that was like very sad. And I used to romanticize romance movies a lot because I'd be like, well, you know, I like that because that can be me one day. And I know what I'm trying to get at is like, you don't have to mimic what you saw and you are able to reparent yourself. That's a thing too. So this is such a touchy subject um but it's like you can be in a relationship you can do it you can you can make it work like it's not it's not like you can never find love i'm just you know the tv like what is on the tv you can it's not like you can never not find love like you can find a relationship you clearly are showing us that you know how to decipher right from wrong and things like this 
in my advice is therapy. Therapy, journaling. You take a look at your relationships with your friends and stuff. Like, what are your love language around your friends, mentors, peers? Um, how do you express your love language to your parents? Have you thought about that? You know, are they open to that? Um, if you can have healthy love with each parent, I think that really would help you. I think no one really ever talked about that too. So yeah, that's my advice for her. For this person. I don't think, did they say the gender? They didn't say the gender. But anyways, guys, I'm going to end the video here. I am so cold. I can't even, like, move. Thank you so much for coming to episode two of our Saint Jesus Tea series. As always, please make sure you like, subscribe, and show love in the comments. Which story stuck out to you today? You can let me know in the comments. Sorry if I'm whispering. I'm trying to regulate my body heat like this. Like I said, I'm so excited about this series. And you can continue to submit your stories on our email. Um, I know, like I said, it's going to take a while for the source to come on in, but we'll be checking every day, and when we do get that, girl, period, we are going to be, we're going to be addressing that, so thank you so much for coming, and I hope you like this one. If there's any stories that you have any statements about, advice for, um, anything you want to discuss with me, which you're like, girl, I don't think you're right for that advice, like, I think my advice is better, like, let's have that talk, let's have that talk. In the comments below, thank you for watching, and I don't know if I told you guys this, but these series are also going to be making it on to podcast like platforms. Um, I just need to get some episodes out first because that's how you prove that you have a podcast. So, this is a video series, however, I want it to be combined as a video slash podcast series. So, just just drop in that little but yeah, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.